F1 Crash Course. This is going to be a new video series where I break down different components of Formula 1 cars and F1 into simple, easy to understand videos. This first video is going to break down suspension, why Formula 1 cars need suspension, how it works and the different types of suspensions that Formula 1 cars use. So the first thing we need to understand is the aim of suspension on a Formula 1 car. Now there are three reasons. The first is to keep the tyres square on track at all times. Second is to keep the weight distributed across all four tyres evenly. And the third is to provide a stable platform for the drivers to perform on. Now when a Formula 1 car is coming out of a corner, it wants all four tyres planted square to the track to provide the maximum amount of traction possible. It doesn't matter how much power you have or your engine has, if you can't open up the throttle, you have no power. So when a Formula 1 car is going around a track and hits a kerb, a bump, or even a banking like in Zandvoort, this causes the tyres to lift off the track. Now the reason this happens is because the tyres hit something which causes them to rotate uh, through the suspension and that is caused by a vertical motion pushing the tyres up. Now as the tyres rotate or lift off the track there's not as much contact area as there would be if they were sat on the track as normal and this is not ideal for Formula 1. As the tyres are the only part of the F1 car that are actually in contact with the track, they are hugely important. Now there are two main aspects that contribute to how the tyres perform. One is through the driver inputs through steering and the other is through the suspension system. So we need to have a quick look under all the area of a Formula 1 car. So underneath the Formula 1 car is the chassis. Now the chassis is the main part of the racing car to which the engine and suspension are attached. Now in Formula 1 these are extremely complicated, made from a lightweight material like carbon fibre but for this example we are just going to look at a steel frame. Now in testing or practice sometimes the drivers will say that the car looks stiff, alternative the car can look sluggish. Now these are different characteristics of the chassis that we'll cover in another video. Now let's imagine the Formula 1 car is going down a straight or round a corner at about 200 miles an hour now this is extremely high speed, so if it hits a small bump or goes over a kerb, this will lift the wheel and as a result the rest of the chassis into the air. Now the reason this is not ideal is because anytime the wheel is in the air, it is not providing traction to the Formula 1 car and it is completely pointless. Now you may think as Formula 1 cars weigh nearly 800 kilos and a huge amount of downforce, they would provide downforce all the time and the wheels would always be on the track now this just isn't the case especially when you're traveling at high speeds the wheels can be off the track for a fraction of a second and even this is negative to lap times so how do f1 cars and the engineers in formula one solve this issue now it is solved through their suspension systems the F1 suspension systems are a lot more complex than your typical road car, but they come down to three main components. The first is the wishbones. Now, these are structural supports just to attach the wheels to the chassis. The second is the track rod. Now, this is connected to the steering wheel and provides steering movements from the steering wheel into the wheels. The third is the push rod in this example or the pull rod, we'll get into the difference in a second and this is what provides the suspension to the Formula 1 car. So the push rod suspension systems we'll cover first as this is currently the most common in Formula 1 cars but the way this works is as the tyre is lifted off the track this vertical movement is converted into a rotational movement as the push rod shown in yellow pushes into the nose of the car. Alternatively, we have the pull rod system. Now this is extremely similar, but as the tire is lifted vertically, the pull rod is lifted up. And as you can imagine, if you're looking at the nose of the car, this rod will be getting pulled instead of pushed. That is where the difference between push rod and pull rod comes from. So let's look at the pros and cons of the push rod and pull rod suspension systems. Now if we consider access, this benefits the push rod. As the push rod attaches very close to where the driver's feet are, this actually attaches above the driver's feet. Now this is extremely beneficial in terms of just working on the car, it's a lot easier to access than going in underneath the car. Also the pull rod attaches underneath the pedals where there is a severe lack of room and it's difficult for mechanics to work on this area. 
The second feature to consider is weight. Now this benefits the pull rod. If you look at the difference here, the push rod and the pull rod are extremely similar, but the pull rod is just slightly lower on the car and has a lower center of mass than the push rod. Now you always want a lower center of mass in Formula 1 cars as this leads to better handling. So the push rod is slightly detrimental to the pull rod in terms of weight distribution. Next is thickness and this also benefits the pull rod. Carbon fiber is extremely strong in tension and not quite as strong in compression so you can have a much thinner component for the same amount of force in a pull rod system. The fourth is aerodynamics and this is where they are pretty much even. F1 engineers can't really decide which one of these is more beneficial and the benefits are negligible. So how do the suspension systems actually work and what is going on inside the nose of the car? Now for the push rod example, when a tyre is lifted vertically by hitting a bump or a kerb, this vertical energy is converted into rotational energy. Now the push rod will push on something called a rocker which rotates and is connected to something called a damper. Now this damper is what helps the suspension and stops the vibration of the Formula 1 wheels. So what is a damper? A damper is a piston which moves inside a sealed oil filled cylinder with an up and down motion from the wheel. So when the wheel hits a bump, there are narrow control passages and one way valves in the piston which allow the oil to flow through this but in a very slow way. Now if you compare this to a piston where there is no oil, this will have no effect. So if you just had the spring, when the wheel hits a bump it will just slam to the bottom and then slam back up with the spring and provide no dampening effect. So when a Formula 1 wheel hits a kerb, you want it to obviously rotate with the suspension system and you also want this to be dampened, you don't want the wheel to be vibrating up and down and you also don't want there to be no suspension as it would be too stiff and rigid. So let's look inside an actual F1 car, now this is the 2022 Mercedes and if you look at the white arrow this is pointing to something called the heave spring. Now this is what is providing the stiffness of the F1 car and the dampening effect. So when an F1 driver comes into the garage and says my suspension is too stiff, this will be adjusted to make it more spongy or alternatively if the car is looking a bit slack they can stiffen it up through the heave spring. Now this is actuated between the two rockers as mentioned previously, obviously as there is a rocker on either side of the car as there's two suspension push rods going into the system. Now you can see the push rods going into the top and connected to the rocker in this case and this basically helps to control the upwards motion of the suspension allowing the car to enjoy a smoother ride over bumps and kerbs. Now if you've ever wondered why drivers take the wide angle around curbs over the bumpy surface rather than sticking just to the smooth road, this is why the suspension system allows the tyre to stay true to the track and to provide pretty much the same level of grip. Alternatively, if you look at Zandvoort, if a stiff suspension system went around this with a square chassis, the wheels would not all sit on the track square. Some wheels would be on the track, some wheels would be off the track, so the suspension system allows for this to be the case. So thanks for watching to the end of the video. If there are any topics you want covered, please comment them down below. And if you could consider subscribing, over 90% of my viewers aren't subscribed and it'd really help me out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.